Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or hi, my name is Stacy. if you're new here. So for today's video, we're doing my signature like Stacy makeup look. I wanted to do this video because I feel like a lot of my recent videos, I was like either doing a specific look for like a theme or like a specific type of video. And I like to try out like different techniques and different styles of makeup. So I just wanted to show like what my own style of makeup is. So if you wanna see how I got this look, then just keep on watching. But before we get into it, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you wanna see more content like this, because it really helps out my channel and it'll really mean a lot to me and let's just get right into the video okay so let's just start off with the base first i have literally like nothing on my face so i'm gonna go in with my kosas foundation because that's what i've been using recently but yeah to do like my signature look it's basically just any medium coverage natural finish foundation so this is just like the current one that i'm using so and then i just apply it all over my face first and then i just take my beauty blender if the foundation has higher coverage, I'll use a damp beauty blender to just kind of like thin it out and make it look more natural. If the foundation has like really light coverage, I'll use a brush to kind of help keep the coverage that it has. But then I'll usually still go over it with a blender, uh, at least a little bit, just to like make sure there's no brush marks or whatever. I just feel like it really makes your makeup like sink into your skin and just like soaks up any excess. I've been always using color corrector lately for my dark circles. And this is the one I've been using. It's the Bobbi Brown corrector in the shade Light Bisque. So this one's actually my favorite out of the ones I've tried. And also, I feel good about recommending it because their shade range of these correctors is absolutely massive, like for a corrector shade range. Because usually correctors are just like light and dark or something, like they'll have like two or three shades max. But the Bobbi Brown one, they have like from pretty light to pretty dark. And then they also have like ones for different undertones. So I feel like there's just a lot more options. And yeah, I like the texture and everything. It's very creamy, but very like thin. Definitely not drying on the eyes up whatsoever. Next, we're gonna go into my Holy Grail concealer, which is Tarte Shape Tape. This is the shade Fairlight Neutral. Guys, I have personally not found a concealer for me that's like better than Tarte Shape Tape, but this is like definitely highly dependent on your skin type and like your skin concerns because I definitely, I probably would not recommend this to like dry skin people. My skin is definitely on the oilier side and I don't have dry under eyes whatsoever. So I feel like it works really well for me. And also the trick is you have to use like literally barely any product. Like I don't understand people who can like cake shape tape on their face. Like no, you have to use like just like one line and that's it. I think the other thing too is like I like a really full coverage concealer. I like a more medium coverage foundation, but for the concealer I like to go full because that's like what I use to cover up like the things I just don't want to be seen like whatsoever. I'm gonna put you guys on to my holy grail combination. So first I put on the Tarte Shape Tape right just all over the under eye, but then I don't know if you can see, I have this like tiny hollowness right here under my eyes that's like, it's still not fully covered up by the concealer. And I'll usually do this if my under eyes are like especially bad that day. So right in those hollows, I take the Kosas concealer, which is a nice hydrating creamy concealer. And I put that right in that hollow. Like basically right in the deepest, like darkest line of my under eyes. And I also don't put too much, like only right in that line because you already put concealer on. And then I can let it like set a little. This is just like to get the maximum coverage and just like completely erase your under eyes. After you do this, like your under eyes will just be gone. So I'm just gonna pat them out now. I just like that this kind of adds like a creamy finish and then also adds extra coverage into that specific area that like needs the most coverage. Okay, so now would be when I move on to my eyebrows. So guys, I've been back into powder brows recently. I use this Anastasia Brow Powder Duo in the shade Medium Brown. I feel like no one on YouTube does powder brows anymore, but let me put you on. I zoomed you guys in so you can see me do my brows better. If you're like me and you kind of have like naturally relatively dark brows, but you like the lighter like natural brow look, like you don't want your brows to be too harsh on your face, a brow powder is 100% the way to go. Because for me, even like with all the years I spent doing makeup, I just really struggle with getting my brows to not get like overly dark and overdrawn. Like on the days when you want to go for a soft brow, but you still wanna fill in your brows, this is perfect. And that's what I've really been into lately. I want my brows to like look more perfected in terms of the shape, but I want them to still be as light as possible. So I use this darker shade for like the outer half, basically like the tail. Once you start filling in the front part, you're supposed to go into the lighter shade. It just makes it easier to keep it more of like a gradient effect. And yeah, I just feel like the brow powder is just way softer and it's just much harder to like overdo your eyebrows. Yeah, I feel like brow powder is slept on. Let me know if you guys use brow powder. If you want the individual like fluffy brow hairs, powder isn't the way to go, but if you like a perfected yet soft brow look. Also, I recently tried the TikTok brow filter. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but it's like super popular on TikTok right now. And you like use it to see like where your brows 
should be according to like the ideal brow placement. And first of all, I realized that apparently this brow like doesn't go in as much as this brow, but I tried to like fill in this part more. And also the other thing is like, it was telling me that I need to draw my eyebrow like all the way out to here, like basically like my temple. And I was like, what? And I did it the other day and I feel like it looked pretty good, but it was still a little bit weird drawing my eyebrow like way farther out than like where my actual brow hairs are. But now I'm like, oh my God, are my brows like abnormally short? So after I do that, I always like to take a brow gel. So I've been using the Makeup by Mario one. And this is like the type that like really glues your brows. This I actually only take on the tail. And the reason for that is that like my brow hairs tend to just like fall down. So I just make sure that they stay up with this brow gel. Cause I just really don't like the look of my brows like kind of like drooping down below where I drew them. I'm gonna keep you guys zoomed in and do the eyes. So my signature eye look involves very little mattes. Okay. So for the matte, it's always gonna be a transition shade. So this is just gonna like deepen our crease like a tiny bit. You just want it to be like a couple shades darker than your skin to give you that like natural kind of contour effect. It's also foolproof if the shade is not too dark because you just don't have to worry about it being too much. For today's look actually, I'm gonna go in with my blush. So this is something I will do sometimes just to like save time or sometimes I'll just pull like the first palette that I see and use the matte in that because it's usually like a matte brown or a matte pink or something like that. So I'm gonna go in my blush shade today as the transition shade. So this is also a good hack if you wanna make sure that your makeup comes out monochromatic because you know it's always gonna match and look good. This is the NARS blush in the shade Impassioned. I love this shade. No one talks about NARS blushes anymore because like they're old, but you can't go wrong with a NARS blush. So yeah, this is the perfect like mute, cool tone pink. It's also very light, but you can see that it definitely added some like dimension and contour compared to the other eye. So I'm just taking this along like my entire crease. I'll take a more flat brush, do the bottom lash line. Don't forget the bottom lash line. It's important. Making sure I deepen this triangle zone right here. That's like a K-beauty thing, but I've been doing it a lot because I feel like it actually really elongates the eye like this way. And see how it kind of like pulls my eyes out like that. I'm gonna go into a shimmer shade. I'm gonna use this Kaja Beauty Bento Trio stack. And this is in the shade Rosewater, which is a nice pinky purpley trio. So we're gonna go in with the middle shade here. Also, I love these bento stacks. They're just so convenient. And the glitters in these are amazing. You can't have a Stacy look without like glittery shimmer. Literally just tap this all over your entire eye. Also today I decided to go for a summer cool toned look. Everything I'm doing is is gonna be part of the like summer cool tone like personal color family. Yeah, is that not the prettiest thing ever? These trios just have such pretty like sparkly shimmers. This is part of my signature look, which is just to have like a shimmer blown out all over the eyelid. I will also do this like without a mat sometimes like if I'm in a rush and usually because like shimmers are multi-dimensional they will kind of like darken at the outer part anyway so they will add like a natural contour depending on the type of like shade you use but yeah so this is definitely part of my signature look also part of my signature look is usually using a shadow liner so I'm gonna go in with this darkest shade in this trio and this is shimmery but it's much less shimmery than the other ones so I feel like you can actually use it as a matte and just kind of like darken the outer portion of my eye right here but yeah so I am not afraid to do like a whole shimmer eye. I feel like a lot of like YouTubers and people just think that like shimmer and glitter is super editorial, but I feel like you can make it pretty wearable. Like I wear glitter like every single day. Like actually there's no way I can do like a whole eye look and not add any shimmer. But yeah, and then I always like wing it out a little bit at the end. And then lastly, we're gonna go in with this top shade, which is like a nice icy shade. I've been doing this a lot ever since I got this Pamagrath Artistry wand. But yeah, so I always take my brush on this wand first. Then I dip into like this powdery, glittery eyeshadow. Cause I feel like that helps it stick to the brush. I'm gonna put this on the inner corner first and kind of bring it all the way up do it on this side too. And then I take it on this lower lash line right here. And kind of emphasize that agosa or like lower eye. Fat. I always like to put like a shimmer on this lower eye bag right here because ooh, you can just see how like it makes it pop out and just looks super cute and like makes your eyes look all watery and sparkly. Like I essentially do the ego style thing, but I don't like drawing like a little line under, but I do like highlighting the, the eye bag itself. So. so you can see like this is exactly like what all the KBD people are trying to draw like on their under eyes. Now we're just gonna do lashes and mascara. I usually do this part off camera, but I'm gonna show you guys this time. I take my normal Shiseido eyelash color first. So this is just to help speed up the process because it curls like most of your lashes at once. But the thing that I don't like about these is that I feel like it doesn't fit my eye perfectly. So then I have eyelashes in the corners that don't get curled up as much. So that's where my next step is gonna come in. I take my mini eyelash curler, also from Shiseido, and now I curl kind of like the inner and outer corners. 
Well, I kind of curl the whole thing just to make it like more uniform. Just catch any section that's not as curled as the rest of the sections. Okay, so now that my, my eyelashes are like perfectly evenly curled, I then go in with a waterproof mascara. So my favorite recently has been this Essence Lash Princess one in the waterproof version, but I also really like the L'Oreal Lash Paradise. I recently just got this L'Oreal Air Volume Mascara. So this one I actually think doesn't give as much volume as like the Lash Paradise does. And I also hate the wand. So I'm not necessarily gonna recommend this. Like this wand is so freaking huge. Like you can see it compared to my eyeball. So I really don't like the wand, but I do like how it makes my lashes look. That's the thing, like I wish there were more volumizing mascaras that had like smaller wands. That's also why I like the, the Essence Lash Princess one so much because that one has like, it has a pretty pointy and relatively small wand, which is nice because with these huge wands, it's so hard to like not get it on your eyeshadow that you tried so hard on. And then you have to like remove the mascara marks and it's just a lot. You can see how that made my lashes like just look so pronounced compared to this one. So yeah, I really like the way that they make them look. Like it's pretty volumized without looking too clumpy. Okay, so that's the eyelashes all done. Really like how they look. I did get a teeny bit on my eyelid, but we'll just wait for that to dry and then scratch it off. And then I'm gonna take my Maybelline Lash Sensational and then just do the bottom lashes. Okay, so now that the eyes are all done, we're moving on to the face. For contour, I'm taking my Fenty Amber Match Sticks, as always. And I like to contour my cheekbone a little bit higher than my actual cheekbone, and then also go up my temple because I have like wide temples there. And then down the jaw, and also the double chin right there. And also can't forget the nose. I'm gonna start blending it out. This is the only contour stick I use because I feel like this is the one that matches my skin the best. It's just like not too warm, not too cool, and it's light enough compared to just any other contour. And it's important to remember to blend it like down your jaw and also like into your hairline. That will make it the most realistic. So even though the contour I do, is, I feel like it's pretty subtle because I make it like pretty blown out. I feel like it definitely does make a difference, especially like in photos because it just helps define my face not make it look so like one-dimensional. Yeah, also I forgot to do this earlier, but this is a, a crucial step. So we're gonna use the Pat McGrath under eye setting powder. You can see I made a pretty big dent in it. You take this small fluffy brush and just press it under the eye. I also really like this powder because it doesn't darken the under eye, unlike some other powders. I think they're just like too dark. Now onto the blush, my favorite part. Since I've been down a K-Beauty rabbit hole lately, I've been using a lot of powder blush specifically because they all use powder blush. Like they don't really use cream blush for whatever reason. Maybe because of masks. And then they also use really pale blushes, like definitely paler than what we see here in the West. I've just been really into that look, but also using multiple blushes, which I'll show you. So first I'm gonna go back into NARS and Passion so you can see what I mean by like a really pale blush. Like, and this is actually already, like, I wouldn't say dark for K-Beauty standards, but just like, this is not super pale in comparison to other K-Beauty blushes. They like a super white based blush, at least for a base color. And I'm taking a denser brush like this just so it can like pack on the pigment more. Yeah, and I've also been placing it more in the front and center of my face right here. I'm just going through a phase right now where I'm like super into K-Beauty. And I also bought a ton of stuff recently from K-Beauty brands. I'm not sure if I should do like a haul or, I'm definitely gonna do a, re a review video cause I bought like a Tude's new collection recently. I think it's their spring collection, but it was released maybe a few weeks ago. Yeah, this is what the blush looks like. So yeah, I plan on doing like an Etude video. Also, I think they're called Etude now, not Etude House. Like they rebranded, which is uh, interesting. So yeah, like you can see how that blush was very pale because I built it up a little bit and it still looks like this, but I think it looks so cute. However, since I am a blushy gal, what I've been liking to do is use a really pale color like this one, just all over as like a base. Then using a darker or brighter point color like this. This is like the viral Dior pink blush. As you can see, this is like way brighter and more saturated. And I'm gonna take this one on a really fluffy brush, which is the A22 from Morphe. So this brush is really good to help diffuse like if the color is really vibrant, especially if you have pale skin, you don't want to add too much pigment at once. So as you can see, I'm just keeping it kind of like in this front and upper region, like closer to my eye kind of. I don't know if you guys can see the difference, but it is just a little bit brighter and I'd like it to be a little bit more noticeable. Okay, so yeah, that's enough of that. Definitely going for this summer cool vibe. And I've been taking a little bit on my nose just to like kind of even out 
the blush, I guess. Okay, then we're gonna take a pink highlighter. Since I use like pretty much all powder cheek products, I'm gonna use another a powder highlighter. But if I used cream blushes, I would use a cream highlighter. I don't really like to mix and match like creams and powders in terms of blush and highlighter. Sometimes I will put like a powder or blush and then a cream blush on top if I want it to look more dewy, but we're not going for that today. So yeah, this is in the shade Rose Quartz, but since Becca's out of business now, you can just use any like pink champagne-y highlighter and put this on the high points of my cheeks. So make sure to use a really light hand with this because I don't really like the blinding stripe of highlight look. I just want it to look kind of natural. And I also usually apply it in like the C shape right here. You can see that glow that that gives. And then a little bit on my nose, but I don't like highlighting my nose too much because I have some texture on my nose, like pores, and if I highlight it, it really like comes out. I try not to add too much. Onto the lips. So I usually overline my lips a little bit. So I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury Iconic Nude. Okay, so first I mostly follow my lip line, but then in the Cupid's bow area, I kind of overline it. And then I smudge it out. And I also overline the bottom part. But then for the sides, I make sure not to overline for like that lifted lip look. And then I also smudge it. So yeah, I like that this just automatically like adds definition to your lips. Like I feel like that just automatically made my lips look bigger. As I mentioned before, I'm a, I've been on a KB kick. So recently my favorite matte lips have been the Etude Fixing Tints. But I also recently got a lot more K-Beauty lips. So I'll be like either reviewing them or doing a haul or something. I'll do some kind of video with my K-Beauty stuff because I'm like super into it right now. So yeah, maybe I should review more K-Beauty stuff. Let me know what you guys think. Just because I feel like there's not that much English speaking content out on there. Like when I search YouTube, there'll be like a few reviews that are in English and then like all of the rest of them are in Korean and I have no idea what's going on. Let me know how you guys think about some more K-beauty being on my channel. Anyway, as I was saying, my favorite matte lip right now is the Etude Fixing Tint. So like these are, they're basically a matte liquid lipstick, but K-beauty brands I feel like are just way more innovative than like Western brands, especially in terms of the lip category. Like they have lip tints down, okay? Like they're just better, I feel like. And also usually for a cheaper price point. The Etude Fixing Tint, like they went viral, I think like half a year ago. But yeah, they're super popular right now because obviously we have to wear masks and these don't transfer at all. I guess they're like a traditional liquid lipstick in that and they dry down with like no transfer. They're super non-drying, at least in comparison to like a traditional liquid lipstick. They just feel like nothing on your lips. They feel like just like what your natural lips would feel like. One thing I particularly like about them besides the not transferring, they like, smooth over your lips and blur them out like no other. Like, I don't know how to describe. I'm gonna use this shade called Dusty Beige. It's one of my favorites. I'm gonna use this as a base color. Okay, because that's what I've been liking to do recently too, is using like multiple lip products. So I'll usually apply a base color like this first. So it looks like this. Like, is that not so cute? Then you have to like let it dry for a bit. It won't dry immediately. That's why it's not super drying, I feel like. So I'll wait for it to dry. A little bit and talk a little bit more. I don't know what sorcery is in this because it blurs over your lips, like just makes them feel smooth and it doesn't dry them out at all, yet it's completely matte and doesn't transfer. It's basically the perfect matte liquid lipstick. And for the price point, okay, I just checked. You can get a two fixing tints for like $8 on Yes Style, which is amazing. But Yes Style is a little bit slow with shipping sometimes, depending on if they have it in stock or not. I actually got these Etude fixing tints on Amazon, since you know Amazon has that fast shipping. And I got it for $14 on Amazon. So you do have to like pay more if you're like buying from something that's like importing it. But yeah, if you want it faster, there's that option. But even so like $14 for like the perfect matte lip liquid lipstick formula. So it's completely dry now and I'll do like a little kiss test. So you can see there's literally no transfer whatsoever. So anyway, this is already like really good. This is already, I'm feeling the vibes, but for like a classic Stacy look, I do like some shine, some gloss. So I'm gonna take, so far my favorite Holy Grail, which is the Roman Juicy Lasting Tint. And this is in the shade Funky Melon. I feel like this is a good summer cool tone shade. So yeah, what I normally do is I take like a lighter, nudier base color, and then I take a brighter or deeper point color and do the like gradient lip. So yeah, that just adds some like shine back and also adds just some more color. Now I'm gonna assess the situation and I think I need a little bit more blush because the lip is a little bit bright. It's gonna go back into the Dior blush and using this fluffy brush again, just adding the teeniest bit more. Like that. I still have the mascara marks. Let me remove that and then remove my hair clips and then I'll be right back. And we still have to powder because I'm an oily skin gal. So going into the Laura Mercier powder. So recently, this is my favorite. I also really like the Kosas one, but I feel like it doesn't control my oils like for as long as the Laura Mercier one does. Like the Kosas one looks so beautiful, but I feel like the 
powder part of it, like the oil controlling part kind of wears off like too fast for my liking. So the Laura Mercier one really just like keeps the stuff in place for longer, I feel like. So yeah, I always have to do like my smile lines right here and after we powder. And then my last step is always the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. So this is like when I want my makeup to last, which is like usually, especially if I'm like going out. So this is the finished look. What do we think? It's kind of like K-Beauty inspired because that's what I've been really into th the past couple weeks. But I will say this, most of this is, is how I've been doing my makeup for the past like couple years at least I would say. This is also I feel like how I do makeup like when I've done my makeup on other people for fun and then the people tell me like it looks like I literally transplanted my face onto them even if all their features and stuff are completely different from mine. So it's just like I feel like my makeup style has like a specific taste to it that like if someone does like their whole face like the same way that I do they end up looking like me. So yeah also let me know what you guys think about me doing some more KB content on my channel as well. I'm still gonna do Western beauty stuff, like I'm not forgetting about that, but let me know how you feel about me adding some K-beauty stuff in here and there. Hopefully you guys enjoyed watching me do my signature look. Don't forget to thumbs up this video if you like this video and comment and subscribe down below if you wanna see more content like this. It really helps on my channel and it'll really mean a lot to me and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.